What's up, everybody? MC Mega Ruler here from FSI DFS. About to break down the slate for Friday, May 7th. We have a 14 game slate starting at 7 05 p.m. A couple weather concerns uh, the Boston game uh, versus the Orioles. Looks like there's going to be some rain there. Uh, that's probably the worst one. I don't know if they're going to be able to get that one in. Cincinnati and Cleveland, there's going to be about a 50% chance of rain. Um, it's light rain, hit or miss there. Maybe they can play through it. Not positive. And uh, Detroit and Minnesota looks like it's going to rain pretty heavily up until the first pitch. There might be a window afterwards where the clear is up, so they might be able to get that one in. So let's get a jump and start looking at pitchers. Uh, Blake Snell is the most expensive pitcher. I am not going to be playing him. He's been pretty um, erratic to start the season. He's up against the San Francisco team. It, yes, it is pitcher park, but um, they've actually been decent against uh, left-hand pitchers. So I, I don't think, you know, I'm going to consider him. Rendon against Kansas City. I'd really do like him. He's got a 31.6% K rating. Uh, he's had a pretty good success. Um, I think there's definitely some strikeouts in this KC lineup, and I think he's going to be my favorite um, SP1 for the slate. In the battle of Los Angeles there, um, the Los Angeles Derby. This was Sakir. Your ass, um, I think he's okay against the Angels. They don't really strike out much, so... Um, you know, he, he, he's a solid pitcher again with those Dodgers pitchers you never know how long their leash is going to be so don't think I'm going to play him but don't hate him Flaherty I actually really like Colorado has been horrible away from Coors um, Flaherty has the seventh highest strikeout rate on this um, slate at 27.8 percent uh, definitely some strikeouts in this um, Rockies lineup so uh, I really like him there also Manea, I think he'll be very low owned. Uh, he's kind of in like the dead man land. I think people will gravitate more up towards like Rendon or Flaherty or, or maybe down a little bit lower. Uh, solid plays. Tampa Bay definitely has some strikeouts in the lineup, so I could see that. Erad against Baltimore, that's pretty risky with the weather. Um, so I'd probably be a fade there. Gallon's got a decent strike out rate too, 28.6%. Um, 8,900, and that's just fired their hitting coach. They're trying to figure things out. So I think, again, he's kind of in that, like, no man's land there with uh, Manea. So uh, I like him, but I don't know if he'll, like, fit in any of the builds. If you're multi-entering, definitely somebody to have in your player pool. Uh, Rogers uh, could be one of the best plays on the slate. Um, he's at a great place at 7K. He just faced this Milwaukee team a couple games ago. He had 27.9 DK points in that one. Um, it's, he's in the pitcher's park. Miami's or Milwaukee's still kind of struggling with their um, their lineup. Yelich is back out of it. So I definitely think that he's one of my favorite mid-range plays here to pair up with Rendon or Flaherty. Uh, Yakuti, Effling, Plesic, not interested in them. Tylon, he's Washington's been not too good without Soda in the lineup. They've been struggling, but I don't think Tylon really goes deep enough into the game. Peterson, possibly. Um, Morton, now I really like him there. Uh, there are some strikeouts in this Phillies lineup. Harper has been, he got hit by that pitch and he's been struggling with, I think, a wrist injury or elbow injury or something. So I, I don't see him as questionable, but um, there's potential that he's not in there and really think that Morton has some good control and that he's got a 26.1% K rate. And at 7.7, I think he's a, a solid SP2 option there also. Uh, DiStefani, I don't hate him against San Diego. San Diego has struggled at times. It's a pitcher's park. I think that would definitely be a little bit of a, a riskier play. Uh, Rich Hill is actually kind of sneaky down here too at 7-1 if you're looking for a cheap SP2 if you're trying to get some of these expensive bats in. Uh, he had um, 20 
5.9 DK points just recently against the A's. Uh, he had a really good game. I think he only gave up one run against them, had 10 Ks, quality start, uh, I think two starts ago. So um, definitely, you know, he's in consideration also. And as I look down here at the rest of these pitchers, I don't really – Shoemaker, he has had such a rough start this season. He's got weather there. Um at, at 6-4, I think he's very risky in GPP play. The only thing is he's up against the Detroit team who has seemed to be struggling versus everybody. And um, I don't really see anybody else that I would really consider here. I mean, you got Suter at 4K, but that might turn into a bullpen game. So, um, yeah. So just to kind of recap, starting up top here, Blake Snell, not going to touch him. GPP, possibly, if he, if he can figure it out and beyond. San Francisco's decent offense. I like Rendon. I like Flaherty. Venera and Galen are okay, and, but they, they're kind of in a dead range. If you want to spend down a little bit for your SP1, I think it's okay. Rogers, I think, is one of the most solid SP2 plays to go with. Morton is another decent SP2 play, and I think Rich Hill is very intriguing just the way he was against Oakland last time. Uh, looking at bats, I think the Yankees are definitely going to be the top stack. They are going against Corbin. Corbin's had, um, he's a left-hand pitcher. They mash righties. John Collar Stanton has just been absolutely on fire recently. I think he's hitting like over 700, hit another home run yesterday. He's got a multi-game hitting streak going. Um, Judge has really been struggling, so I don't know about him. He had like five strikeouts the game before. He had a couple more yesterday. But uh, Hicks is moving up higher in the lineup. Frazier hit a home run yesterday. He's projected to bat sixth. Um, any of the right-handed bats here, I think I really like for the Yankees. They seem to be affordable. Definitely one of my favorite stacks. Minnesota against um, Scoble. If the uh, slate, or if the slate, if the game's not canceled due to rain, I think they're my second favorite stack. Love the righties against him. Um, Buxton got hurt. I think he pulled a hammy or a quad or something. He hit a ball around the first base, kind of pulled up. He probably could have beat it out normally. Yesterday, he got pulled from the game, so I don't see him in the projected lineup for today. They have Garver leading off. He's expensive for a catcher at 5-2 on DK, but it's a, a solid play in that spot where most people are punting. Could um, be, you know, one of the best plays on the, on the slate there for that position. So, um, Donaldson and Cruz, Garlic, um, I'll even like Kepler, even left hand lefty, like Scoble is such a bad pitcher. Uh, Sano has a, a really nice price. I think he's uh, definitely someone you might need to lock in there if this game's going to play and the weather's okay for a space at 3 3. Um, really, really like him there. Uh, Chicago White Sox, uh, these guys are a little bit expensive going up against Keller, but. I definitely um, like them. Keller's not a good pitcher, and uh, they have a 4.75 run total. Of course, you know, I probably like um, the switch hitters, um, Grandal and Marcada, a little bit better, Eaton, but I definitely think you can make a case for some of the righties also. In uh, GPPs, if you're willing to pay down and, and pitcher and maybe take, like, the Rich Hill and um, – another cheap pitcher like maybe um morton for your pitching uh these dodgers are very expensive but they're in a really good situation against griffin canning canning is the sixth starter he's just kind of floating in there just to make sure the other guys get five days of uh rest so always like the lefties but definitely could see righties against them again it's um pretty uh expensive stack so you're going to have to make some sacrifices with pitchers or only get four, not a five man. So um, something to consider. Another uh, GPP stack to consider would be the Padres. Again, DeSafani is not a bad pitcher. Um, he, I said you could consider him as like a GPP if you want to go contrarian there because they have struggled at times. Um, it's a pitcher's ballpark, but this is a great offense. And when they go off, they go off. So definitely somebody to look at there. Uh, just calling out an individual bat. It is a revenge game for Arenado going up against Colorado and a lefty. So kind of like these righties on St. Louis also as a secondary stack. 
I keep an eye on if the roof's going to be open or closed in Seattle and Texas. If the roof is going to be open, it has a nine total, which means it possibly could be. Um, it's going to be a hot day. The ball could be flying in the 90s there for temperatures. So uh, you have Seeger up against uh, a right-handed pitcher in Fulton Average that kind of struggles. Uh, I'm okay even playing some of the righties here up top in the Seattle lineup. Uh, maybe three or four in the stack. I don't think I go full five guy or one. And uh, Flexen, my friend from the KBO last year, hasn't been bad this year, but I think if the temperatures are there and that ball's flying, some of the left-handed power bats up here of Lau, Low, and um, Gallo are definitely in play to fill out. Um, as I said, uh, San Francisco would be an intriguing stack against Blake Snell. Uh, they, they could throw a very heavy righty lineup here. They have been decent against left-handed pitching. So um, <clears throat> prices are pretty cheap too. Slater at 2.9, Ruff at 2.5. If you're looking for Zongoria, 3.2, Brandon Belt is lefty, I wouldn't play him. Posey's probably the most expensive one at 4.8. He seems to have having a renaissance with his career. So I can definitely, you know, see some of these cheaper bats going. And the final game I want to look at that some people might be scared off on. Ross Strickland is an average pitcher. Uquity has been a decent pitcher um, to start the season, but they're both right-handed pitchers, but they're both reverse splits. So I think a lot of people will look at this, and if they do play bats from this game against Strickland, they might attack them with the lefties, but the righties are um, much better with the split. Um, Strickland has actually... Um, his slugging percentage is 657 versus righties and only 398 versus lefties, which is still pretty, pretty high. But, um, you know, and the same thing with your quitty is not as um, very versus splits, but his uh, some of his stats versus righties are worse than versus lefties. So um, Toronto could definitely be a sneaky stack, uh, you know, like taking pieces from both sides of this game. So. Uh, again, favorite stack, Yankees, Minnesota, if it doesn't rain, the White Sox, some Dodgers. Uh, if you want to get sneaky, take San Diego or San Francisco. Uh, keep an eye on Seattle and Texas. Um, Miami might even be against this Milwaukee bullpen game. The Miami bullpen is or the Milwaukee bullpen is pretty good, but Miami's got some cheap bats there if you're looking for some, some value. St. Louis righties versus... Um, Gomber, especially uh, airing out with the uh, revenge game. So I think that's going to be a wrap it up for our coverage for Friday. So thanks for watching. Give us a like, drop some comments below. We'll try to get back to you. Check me out at Twitter at MegaRuler31. And um, good luck on the slate.